Hi, I'm Dr. Andromeda Stevens with the Scoliosis Coach here at Pilates Sports Center in Los Angeles. We are going to learn wedging for scoliosis. We have already done our scoliometer test and our spine mapping from the previous two videos. We have now drawn our map and we have marked right and left. Your map was done from behind your client. Our client is now going to be facing up, so we have to keep in mind that this is going to be reversed. We did mark where the rib humps and bumps were, maybe from our scoliometer or maybe just from our photographs. We now have our lovely model, Samantha. She is now face up. We're going to have her nice and supported with a pillow under her neck to give her a normal and supported curvature of her neck. The long legs will help keep a nice lumbar curve in her spine if that's what you're looking for. If that's not necessary for your situation, we can have her bend the knees. We can use different things for our wedging purposes. I literally have some foam wedges. We could just use a folded up towel, or we could use folded up grippy material, which that way you can get it exactly at the density that you want and it won't slip around. I'm going to use the wedges, they might be a little bit hard to see, but I like them because you can determine the angle as you are placing them. The further that you go in, the more angle you're going to get. You never want to place them far enough in to cross over the midline and cross the spine. So, if we look at our map, we know that we have a right rib bump. That would be her right facing up. We want to place our first wedge under her right bump. Place your right arm out to the side like you're doing the stick-up position because this will help to derotate your spine and flatten out that curvature and bump. We're going to place the wedge just under the ribs straight in. Good. We might also notice that the client has unleveling of their shoulders and the right shoulder might have been sitting further forward. If that's the case, we need to wedge the other shoulder to bring it up so that they're level. That's going to be at approximately the shoulder joint. If we had a bump in the lumbar spine, and we did in our client, so that's on the left, her left, face up, we're going to put a wedge in her lumbar spine. And let's just move your hand just slightly out of the way and come back down. Good. If we had noticed, and only if you had noticed, that the hips are unlevel from front to back, you may then wedge your last wedge under the pelvis that is lower to bring it up. But we don't notice that in this client, so we're not going to add any padding for that. You want to be very certain that you have noticed all of the unleveling before you started wedging, and you aren't starting to wedge after you've done the wedging it could have shifted her pelvis in some way that wasn't accurate. So this is her wedging with her face up. This would be fine on the Cadillac, on the reformer, on the mat, maybe even when she's sleeping. Let's try you face down. What happens with um, a curvature and the ribs is that there might be a rib bump in the front corresponding to the rib bump in the back on the opposite side because the rib cage has torqued. So let's flip you over onto your belly and take these wedges away. All right, she's going to be face down. She still has her dot stickers from her mapping. Most scoliosis clients will have a left head tilt and we're gonna need to have them come correct. So she might need to turn her head to the right if she did have a head tilt. So you can turn your head right, Samantha, if you'd like to. Excellent. And then we're going to remember, always reviewing your map, that we had a rib bump on the right in the back. We're probably going to have a rib bump in the front on the left. Make sure you see it before you wedge it. We're going to create a small wedge under the rib bump on the front. Excellent. We also need to possibly correct the shoulders again. Remember that you're only going to wedge when you saw it in the normal position, not after you begin um, all of your wedging. Okay, this would be good then for your mat work swimming. Again, reformer on the long box, what have you, or on the Cadillac. We're going to leave it at that and keep it simple for now. 
let's have you come all the way up and talk about sitting. So if she's sitting Indian style, go ahead and sit Indian style with your back to the camera facing me. When you sit Indian style, the legs will cross one over the other and that could create an unlevel pelvis. You might want to cross the other way and create an unpelvis the other way, an uneven pelvis the other way. It's best not to sit Indian style unless you're certain of the direction you're pushing the hips and in most cases it's too complicated. So Indian style could be a little bit of a problem, plus you'll notice that she's hard pressed to sit up tall and her lumbar spine goes a little flat. It would be very hard work to come in and find that lordosis. We are never going to wedge under a hip to level up or down unless you are absolutely certain that you know what's happening with the curvature of your client. You could cause more harm than good. When you are lying down supine or prone, you are resting, you are non-weight bearing, the wedging that in that location should be um, completely safe and healthy. Thank you for modeling and thank you for watching. You can contact us at Pilates Sports Center or at Scoliosis Coach. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.